Hey, we're back with Wing Nation, co-host Aaron Crocker Evernham on the air with me today. We're about to talk to a, a first-time guest on the show. The, the day actually is all first-time guests on the show. Glenn Styers, the Oswegian Flyer, driver of the number zero, big winner this weekend in the King of the 360s, Ronald uh, Laney Memorial down at East Bay. Glenn, thanks for joining us on the show. Hey, I really, hey, I really appreciate the invitation. This is the first time ever. Well, my goodness, you win a big race like this. How can we not have you on? Oh, you know what? It's, it's been, been incredible. incredible. I just got up on the phone with uh, Joe Chisholm, Chisholm at uh, Sirius Radio and, and kind of, uh, I don't know, I don't know had this many phone calls before. before. It's been incredible. Well, I imagine. Walk us through your week. It's a three-day show. Kind of give us an idea of how the weekend was going for you. I have, I have a really, really interesting story. I had I had, I had uh, a dinner with a special long uh, fundraising for um, Canadian Diabetes. So I had Dean Ida drive my car Wednesday for practice and Thursday for the race. And I flew back in Friday morning. And you know what? We were out to lunch. Our car wasn't running right. We couldn't get a hold of the track. And so the next day. Uh, today we uh, put, a, put new, a, new, a brand new, new Joe Gertie motor, motor in and uh, still had a little bit of problems, but we ended up running Slade Shock. That's, it was just incredible. He was uh, the whole shock went out of hooked up to the track when Joe's motor taken off. I think that was the key. Yeah, looking at your results, it, it did kind of look like you, you struggled a little bit, especially on Friday night, Aaron, you were talking about like, coming in. and. Then you see, you ran the B main on Saturday. So you didn't just go in there and sweep the show Saturday night. You ran the B main. And I've heard a lot of people say, Aaron, you might know some of this, that running the B main can help you. Yeah, definitely. It gets you on the track, gets you, you know, you come back and you've got more feedback to give to the crew chief. Glenn, I just want to say congratulations. We go way back. And I was so excited when I read the results the next morning. That was awesome. How awesome did it feel to put that crown on? Hey, you know what? Uh, but all of that was incredible, uh, but seeing my name on the speed TV ticker was probably the highlight of my life. I mean, I mean, a lot of these guys have raced in all of these races, and you know what? I've I've been here. I've been probably five years trying to win this race, and uh, you always dream about it, but you never expect it. And, uh, we got it done, and it was incredible, especially for the media. It just makes it more. That more great. Well, and you have two daughters at home, so I imagine when you get home and see their excitement and how proud of you they are of you, that's got to be pretty thrilling too. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been, been incredible. incredible. Um, I, I wish, wish they, they could have made it. it. You know, we were trying, trying to make all kinds of different, different plans and arrangements, and uh, I, I bought my wife Headley uh, concert, concert tickets, tickets and it just, it just, it just uh, she just couldn't make it happen. So. So they, they didn't, didn't make it, and I really wish they were here. But now what concert trumped watching their dad race? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was, it was a Christmas, Christmas, pre Christmas present. I didn't look at the dates. I just, you know, you know, you know, know how they are, right? <laughs> this stuck. Probably conflicting uh, dates and stuff. You know, was it a Justin Bieber concert? Thing. Was it Justin I Bieber heard. for your kids going to watch Justin Bieber? Well, it was my it was my wife. She ended up going to a, a Headley concert. Oh, okay. Well, we, we all accept that one. And, <laughs> yeah. Now, Glenn, what's your uh, what are your plans for this season? It, and do you think this big win under your belt that maybe you might add some more big shows to your your plans for the year? Well, I'll, I'll tell you what happened. I broke my wrist August, so I've been out of the car for seven months, months. and yeah. um, when, when you come, come back uh, racing, racing again, it, it seems, seems like you have a whole new set because I broke, I broke my wrist. wrist, it took everything away that I love to do, and uh, I come back and I was just so grateful to be able to, to race again, and, um, and I, think, I think when you have a more appreciation instead of expecting it, I think, uh, I think more comes out of you. Definitely, and, and I think it makes winning races like that even more special. There were a lot of issues that night, Glenn. We're hearing a lot of talk from fans that weren't really happy with the track preparation, not happy with the track laying down rubber. How hard is it? I mean, you're you're a famous promoter in the sport at Oswego Speedway. 
how hard is it on nights like that to kind of turn your promoter brain off of what you would be doing and concentrate solely on the race? Well, I think um, because I talked to the promoter that night, the, the day before, he was worried about rain, he was worried about cold weather, and, you know, it was a decision that had to be made, and you really just have to live with the results. And um, he was worried because it would be cold, he didn't want to put too much water on the crack, uh, because, you know, I've been in that situation where we, we tried to do more, and ended up worse, and uh, it's just, it's just a crap shoot. It's, it's, you just get what you get, and and um, there's really nothing you can do do about it. And I can really relate because this is a car. You can you can always wish you change something uh, to make it, and sometimes it backfires. But you know what? The track was fine. I loved it. And, uh, <laughs> of course you did. It was it was great. And, and they said the fans actually had a pretty good time. It was the guys that worked in the pits and, and, and on the teams that were complaining about the rubber going down. But for the fans, that's a thrilling race because you really don't know who's going to win it. And, and you made the, the pass for the lead on the last lap, correct? Yeah, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what happened. I spun out on lap 18, and so I was right at the back. And uh, my guys were telling me that uh, Shane Stewart was a a lap down twice. So I wasn't in the game at all until it went through, and uh, I just found a groove on the track where nobody else was running, and guys were making fun of me because they said I didn't know any better. I was driving around the top where I shouldn't have been, and, and it didn't work. So. Probably saved your tire up there. <laughs> Absolutely, and I think the first, um, you know, because I never ever raced a rubber down track, I had the just coast around the top and and probably after 20 laps, laps I think there's about, about 30 laps left, left I, I turned up the wick and just started, started picking, picking off the cost like it was two or three every lap and before you know it I was in uh, second spot and then I was taking a lead and then I was back and forth and then it was just probably really incredible for the fans to see. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So what, what is your next race? I know that you're busy with your track, and, and there's a lot of plans going on there. What, when's the next time you'll actually get behind the wheel? Well, my, my goal, I was planning on going to Vegas with the Woo, Woo guys, and uh, I don't know if that's going to happen. They told me it's a 48-hour 48, 48 drive for the truck, so to go out there for one race um, is kind of unrealistic, but if I do the California swing, and um, it'll be fun to do. Now, how hard is that for you guys? Because those are 410 races, but you just did a 360. Do you have to make a lot of changes to do that? Well, it's the same car. And really, I think you can see when the 410 guy comes down to a 360, he struggles. And when the 360 guy goes to a 410, they struggle. It, it's, such a, it's such a drastic um, difference between the two. Uh, I always tell everybody a 410 isn't a part time thing you want to be in that car as much as possible. And Aaron could probably uh, relate to that. It's kind of why we sold our stuff because I was frustrated doing the part time thing here. You know, unless you're doing it every night and on top of the wheel, it's, it's difficult to do. But now that we've sold everything, I really want to get back in. Maybe I can come get uh, my sprint car career going like I did a few years ago at Oshkosh Speedway. Yeah, it was incredible. Now, what are your, uh, you have the Outlaws coming back this year, and what are the big dates? Yeah, I know yeah. you always have the Canadian Sprint Car Nationals. Yes, we have, um, we have Tony Stewart booked for uh, July 30 and 31. Uh, the first night is the Corvax Sprint Night with the 360, and the Tuesday, the 31st, is uh, the World of Outlaws. And then we have at the September the Canadian Sprint Car Nationals. We usually draw about 85 cars for that last show, and I believe it's $12,000 for the largest uh, one-day event show is going. Speaking of Tony Stewart, last year he wins his first World of Outlaw race at your track. How cool was that? I mean, he really put us weekend on the map for people who had never have been to that track before. You know what? It's incredible. I mean, for, for him, him to, to come, come here, here win the, the win the race, um, go, go back, back to the championship, championship, you know, 
really um, given, given us a lot, a lot of credit for his success winning the uh, championship. Really, really meant a lot, and uh, it's, it's it's incredible. It's truly like a dream come true for me and, and for him. And uh, you know, if anybody would have predicted that, I wouldn't have believed it. And it was it's, it's so surreal. And it took a long time to really believe that he won at a Shuriken Speedway, and I watched that race over and over a thousand times, and it's just. Unreal, like amazing. Well, I, I can probably guarantee you that he has watched that yeah. over and over a million times as well. For sure. And you know what? We've, he's raised my car a couple of times. And, and uh, you know, everywhere we go, he's three tenths faster than the field. Uh, he broke, broke the track, track record at Black Rock. You, you know, he, he, he come, come from, from, he had, he had the night off, jump jumped in the, the car, the seatbelts were to just a right. And, <laughs> I can see why he's a champion just from sitting back and watching him. He can get up on that wheel and lay down the fast flat and it's, it's just incredible. I mean, he's truly a champion in everything he drives. I, I completely agree and I think the whole sprint car world is so glad that he's a part of it for that reason. Before we let you go, I just have to ask you, Glenn, because I was reading up on your bio on your website. You're into UFC fighting? How into this are you? Do you actually compete? No, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a we sponsor, sponsor uh, uh, Apple. Uh, uh, we have a lot of, similar to NASCAR, like those are the elite fighters. So we have a lot of uh, fighters that we, we sponsor and, um, you know, do fundraising with and, and promote. Uh, we have the Rochester Nighthawk team and we bring fighters out and really, really, um, not only a huge fan, um, but just just really, really love, love to be around that, like uh, NASCAR, and PGA Golf, and uh, and UFC are my favorite things that I that I pursue and, and love to sponsor. Well, I love that you threw in PGA Golf <laughs> with UFC fighting because that to me could not become more opposite. And I'm glad you said that you don't actually participate because I was going to have to have a slight like intervention with you <laughs> about about not getting injured <laughs> and the importance of keeping your body in one piece if you want to race. I was going to ask if that's what happened to the wrist. Make it older. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll just keep you out of the UFC fighting, keep you on the sprint car side where we want you to be. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm sure we're going to have you on the show later this year. We'll talk a little off weekend Speedway and, and what, what you're doing with the uh, with the sprint car. It looks like it's going to be a great year for you. Uh, I'm hoping so. I'm predicting a, a, uh, an amazing, amazing year. year. Well, good. Glad to hear it. Thanks again for joining. I know Aaron was very glad to hear you on there. So yes, uh, great to chat with you. Yeah, Glenn Steyer, big uh, winner. Exciting time. All right. Thanks a lot. That, that is so cool. And it's got to be fun for you to talk to someone like that, that that was kind of instrumental in your early career. It is. And, and Glenn All is right, someone who puts so much into sprint car racing. His track is a top-rate top facility. I mean, it is beautiful. Um, he always is giving guest drivers. I know Tony's driven his car a few times. I know Wayne Johnson when he's come to visit, like a number of people. He has, like, this huge stable of cars. He has the best motors. But he's just so passionate about it. That's what you love about him. Um, Ray came to watch me race there a few years ago. And he was, like, so excited that we were there. He was like, come on out. I want to show you the track. And we hopped in, like, his brand-new Escalade, white Escalade. And the track is, like, thick mud, hasn't even been run in. <laughs> and we're blasting around out there in a brand. Like, he just loves the sport, loves cars, loves people. He's just an awesome guy. And Great those are the sport. kind of people we want in the sport and, and that we get excited about. And it's also that passion is probably why he's so successful, because he actually loves what he's doing. Absolutely.